Welcome back to the channel guys. What a weekend of Championship football we've had. We've had a lot of drama. We've had a lot of last minute goals. We've even had some drama outside of the pitch as well, which I'll discuss later on in the video. Now, time for me to be sincere for once. Thank you to the 50 of you that have smashed that subscribe button. I am officially on 50 subscribers. I'm not gonna throw a big party about it, it's only 50. But in the end of the day, that was my first target to get 50. Targets for the future would be 100, then maybe 200, then maybe 500. 1,000 is my ultimate target. If I sustain that, I know that I can end YouTube knowing that I've done a good job. There's another moment of history from the channel. We officially have a first shout out. Congratulations to James Kelday, who managed to go at Reading and Millwall completely correct. I, however, on the other hand, got a fantastic zero. I got none right at all, which is very, very rare for me. Also, finally, before I move on, if you do like what you see and you want to continue seeing championship content, please make sure you give the video a like and share the channel. All of that will be tremendously appreciated. Make sure you do subscribe for regular championship content, as I say. Also, if you guys want to talk to me outside of YouTube, my Twitter is in the description down below. I'm using the platform a lot more now. So yeah, if you want to follow me, go check that out. I'm just going to give you my thoughts, my general opinion on every game that went on in this weekend. 15 games have gone. We're officially a third of the way of the season. Let's hop into some of these results and talk about some of these games. We have to start at Oakwell with a very dramatic 2-2 draw between Barnsley and Bristol City. Uh, in this game, it was it happened exactly how I actually kind of expected. I know I predicted Bristol City to win, but I knew Barnsley did have a fighting spirit within them. Bristol City started the strongest side in the first 15 minutes or so. Barnsley then grew into the game and Connor Chaplin was ultimately denied a goal by a spectacular save by Daniel Bentley, which managed to turn away from the post. And then a little bit against the run of play, Bristol City eventually went ahead through a set piece Pretty poor defending on their part. Ashley Williams got a free header and a free run up and he had the similar sort of task managing to head through. And this has kind of been what Barnsley's problem has been. Just the defence not being disciplined enough to deal with set pieces. It got worse for Barnsley in the beginning of the second half. Andres Weiman managed to head at another corner. And by then I thought Bristol City were going to be really, really comfortable. They were going to see the game out and they were not going to allow Barnsley to get back in this. They really did not do that. Momentum completely shifted to Barnsley in around the 70th minute. And then Barnsley knew that they needed something to play for. And eventually they got their luck with Helm scoring from a corner. Once again, really questionable defending this time on Bristol City's parts. If you're going to give Helm that much space with his height, you know you're in trouble. In the 94th minute, Corley Woodrow managed to poke the ball through the net following another corner. So set pieces is what ultimately decided this game. After seeing Lee Johnson's interview, he looked like a broken man. He knew that Bristol City should not have given that away. And he's got really, really high expectations of them, which is what you want in a manager. But right now, they're looking like they're in a winless streak. They have not won in their last two games, obviously. You could have argued they were a little bit fortunate to get a win against Charlton Athletic as well. So Bristol City need to recover better and score more goals. I was happy to see the return of Thomas Callas. I think he had a really positive effect. With Barnsley, they don't have a bad run of game. Their next six games are against teams in the lower half of the table, including Middlesbrough, Reading, Blackburn. They could really, really capitalise on those games. I know they've not won since the beginning of the season, but if they need to sort out their defensive problems, if they just don't do that, then I can't see them surviving, in my opinion. So there we had Swansea picking up an away victory against Wigan, and I'd say Kiefer Moore could have had the hat-trick with the amount of chances he had. But Swansea started well, they really put Wigan under pressure, Nathan Dyer eventually got the opening goal. The amount of space he had was scary, I don't know what the defence was doing there, but it was a brilliant pass by Bursat Selina and Swansea went ahead. Wigan had a terrific response going behind. They eventually won a penalty. Very questionable defending by Van der Horn. If you've got a shirt pull Shea Dunkley, you're almost asking for trouble. Keith Moore slots a really, really nice penalty. The game had a few scrappy moments with between a few players. There was quite a lot of yellow cards in this game. From then on, the game was really end-to-end. -end. A very entertaining game, actually. And it was eventually Swansea that got the winner in the 94th minute of the game with Sam Surridge managing to poke the ball through from across. It's a good win for Swansea, even though they may have not been playing their best. The fact they grinded out victory shows that they've got a strong mentality. 
Wigan at times really showed their class and in fact probably were the better team if you looked at the game overall but if they go against other teams with that mentality Wigan should be fine. So there we have Blackburn and Sheffield Wednesday with Blackburn managing to end their awful run with a 2-1 home victory. It was a game where I think it lacked a little bit of quality in the final third. The game didn't really actually kick into life until the 83rd minute where Jacob Murphy managed to put Sheffield Wednesday ahead. And I think from then on, I thought Sheffield Wednesday were going to grind out a clean sheet. But then five minutes later, Adavabio managed to get an equaliser and then Buckley managing to finish the job. In terms of possession and shots, it was a pretty equal game overall. I think Blackburn, they've done really, really well to manage to get back into winning ways now with Sheffield Wednesday. I was moderately surprised that there was a lack of quality in the final third. In fact, in the first half before the game practically sprung into life, I'd say Blackburn crafted the better chances. Kieran Westwood had to dig Sheffield Wednesday out a couple of times. So yeah, very positive day for Blackburn. Sheffield Wednesday may be a little bit of an off day. So then we had Brentford and Huddersfield with Huddersfield managing to pick up a 1-0 home victory. This result completely threw his banner for works in terms of Brentford's great form. But it goes to credit how well Danny Cowley has done, how much improved Huddersfield Town are and what a player Carlin Grant is. I think this was harsh on Brentford a little bit. They did craft a few chances. Mbumbio and Ollie Watkins managed to get into a few decent positions. But defensively, this is the best I've seen Huddersfield defensively. In terms of Huddersfield's goal, it was a great ball by Fraser Campbell and Carlin Grant had the symptoms of task by shooting the ball past Rhea. The thing is with Huddersfield though, they've got a really tough test that got an away trip to the current championship leaders, Preston North End. If Huddersfield can get a result against Preston, I think it's just a testament that Danny Cowley has now put Huddersfield Town to be competing with the best. With Brentford, I think they were a little bit unlucky that they didn't get at least a draw in this game. I think they'll recover well. Huddersfield did not want to be beat today and they didn't and they even got benefit from that and got a win from it. And I think the game of the weekend has to be at the Cardiff City Stadium with Cardiff City winning by four goals to two. It had everything from two red cards to two penalties, two scraps. Wow, it was a really entertaining game for sure. Birmingham surprisingly you would say took the lead but in fact based on the balance of play Birmingham were the better side in the first part of the first half. Christian Pedersen managed to get the lead very quickly in the third minute of the game. Joe Walls managed to score a penalty very soon after. Now Nelson managed to turn the game around completely and then Cardiff were winning by half time. Danny Ward managed to get sent off with a really really dangerous challenge. I do agree with the decision of a red card. Joe Walsh managed to score again for Cardiff to get to be 3-1 up. Sunjic managed to score in the final minute of normal time which made it 3-2 and then I think what ultimately lost it for Birmingham is that Cardiff got a second penalty and Harley Dean got sent off by Elbow with Joe Walls which managed to cause the biggest scrap in the game. It was not, it was ugly scene. Cardiff managed to benefit by gaining all three points in this game. I'm still not convinced with Cardiff's performance overall. At times they've looked well, really really good but the way how they really invited Birmingham in the game in the first half, they really struggled to get going and Birmingham could, could have run away with it with some of the chances they had. But I think Cardiff would take this win, it was a snatch and grab and I think for Birmingham they would they'll recover. And then we have Derby beating Middlesbrough by two goals to nil and I'm really fearing for Middlesbrough at the moment. They're I think the lowest scorers of the league in terms of chances, they've got one of the lowest um, chances per game in the league as well. It's just not clicking for Jonathan Woodgate at the moment. They had their period of four games unbeaten, but they didn't really manage to pick up many points from that. And it has caused Middlesbrough to remain in the bottom three of the table. Derby, they were far from convincing again. However, they did have some passages of really, really nice play. Tom Lawrence managed to score Derby's two goals in the game. Both very, very nicely worked. George Savile managed to get sent off by doing a really, really dangerous challenge on Christian Bielik. I was going to be very interested how Derby were going to react following the sacking of their captain, Richard Keogh. But... Tarby seemed to have recovered well. I think it was one of their better games. It's not perfect and I think with Koku, he does need more time. Working in Eredivisie to the Championship is completely different. I think eventually when he has more of his staff players, I think Derby will start playing with a lot of intensity. But with Middlesbrough, however, I am really, really scared for them. I know Randolph is still out because he picked up an injury. Fletcher and Asomba Longo don't look like they're always going to score. It is a, it's a bit of a sticky situation for Middlesbrough at the moment. And you've got to question, are they going to be firm and sack Woodgate and get someone else in? Or are they going to stand by him and wait for a few results to go by? 
tricky one this. Then one of the results of the weekend definitely was Hull picking a 3-0 away victory against Fulham. They had a terrific away victory against Nottingham Forest in midweek and they had another terrific victory against Fulham but more importantly keeping a clean sheet as well. Fulham showed a lot of fragility I thought. In the first half I thought Fulham were really really poor. In terms of the possession play it almost like went outside the window. Hull were just completely all over them. In the second half I think but Hull sat back a little bit and tried to hold their lead. Fowler managed to get Hull into the lead and took half time, but despite Fulham's dominance in the second half, Jared Bowen and Eves managed to extend Hull's lead and to get a very convincing 3-0 away victory. This one puzzles me this. Fulham have not been all that convincing in then last few games or so. I feel like the international break needs to go sooner rather than later than Fulham because they need to address some things. With, with Hull though, they've got two fantastic away victories in a row. I must say Grant McCann start, starting to work his magic now at Hull. They look a lot more dangerous, they look a lot more aggressive going forward and they look a lot more clinical, which is very encouraging. Very at Leeds, finally scoring more than one goal at home, beating Queen's Park Rangers by two goals to nil. I was a little bit nervous for Leeds hearing that Enketia had an abdominal problem, so he couldn't play in the game and banned for Manchester. So, however, I praise Marcelo Bielsa's tactic of managing to revert with Bamford and Tyler Roberts starting up front. I think this was Roberts' first half of the season. Tyler Roberts, the man himself, managed to get the third first goal in the game eventually managing to break through Queen's Park Rangers pretty resolute defence in the opening minutes of the game. In terms of chances, Queen's Park Rangers didn't create all that much that was going to terrify the Leeds defence and Kiko Casilla. But you always had that nervous feeling Leeds only scoring one goal. But Jack Harrison managed to calm Leeds' loves managing to get them 2-0 up in the 82nd minute of the game. Bamford again failed to score in the game. However, he was really, really important in terms of Leeds creating a lot of chances. And even though he's really struggling to score goals at the moment, I do heavily praise the impact he does have in the team, whether it may not contribute to goals. He is a hard worker and he is very, very important to that side. With Quiz Park Rangers, they've now suffered two defeats on the bounce, both by two goal margins. Mark Walkerton's got to think of something really, really quickly to get them out of this situation because the big quality players in that squad were really, really quiet in this game. But I think... When you play against Leeds United, you're always expected to get dominated. Now they've got that game out of the way, they've got to move on to next game and really make a statement to be a top six team. A very of Nottingham Forest going back to winning ways, managing to beat Luton Town by two goals to one. It was a game where I think Nottingham Forest, I think, were the better side for the large majorities of it. Lewis Graben and Sami Obi, Ami Obi managing to get Nottingham Forest's two goals. By then on, it was going to be a mountain to climb for Luton. However, fair play to them. They did manage to grow into the game in the second part of the second half. Callum McManaman scoring a fantastic goal from just inside the penalty area, doing a little crossover and then shooting it into the goal. There was terrific skill into that goal. Fortunately for Luton, it wasn't quite enough. Luton are in a bit of a precarious position at the moment. They're only just above the relegation zone. They would need to pick up more points at home. But with Forrest, this was the reaction that they needed. They needed to make sure that they were not going to lose any ground against in the top six. They didn't. They grinded well. They got a 2-1 away victory. Happy days for them. Then we have Mark Bowen working his magic again with Reading. They managed to beat Millwall by two goals to one. I really did not expect this at all. Reading were absolutely terrific in the opening stages. Or Betia managed to score... And Sam Baldock's goal for second, wow, that was perfect. Literally right in the edge of the box, shooting right in the top corner. It could not have been better executed. Fair play to Millwall. They managed to get back in the game. In fact, they scored a really good goal on their own. Fantastic solo effort by Jed Wallace. Managing to get past about three or four Reading players and managing to slot it past Cabral. I have to say, so far, Reading have shown a lot more resilience since Jose Gomez leaving the role and their performances have looked a lot more positive. With Gary Rowett, I think he's got needs a lot more time to try and work a system for Millwall because at times they looked really, really good. But I think they were just ultimately blown out the park by a really positive Reading side. And away from home as well, I think Gary Rowe has got to set Millwall up a bit differently like they were at home against Stoke. Charlton versus Preston, top of the table clash. 
and it was Preston that got on top with a very slim 1-0 away victory. Preston North End are currently the leaders of the championship. Of course that can change after Stoke play West Brom, but as it stands, Preston are the current leaders of the championship. What is going on? It was a really, really feisty game. And it was recognisable that both of these sides were at the top of the table. Both sides were really, really attacking each other. I think the one negative you can have about Preston, they can't seem to score many goals in open play. Their only goal was from a penalty that was conceded by Pierce. Paul Gallagher managed to do his trademark penalty, walking away from the goal and shooting it straight home. Not many better penalties that I've seen. Preston again were really, really good, especially second half actually. Especially in the 80th to 90th minute period, they had two fantastic chances where they hit the bar and Barcusen probably should have done a lot better, but Dillian Phillips managing to make a fantastic save off his line. Charlton did have a few chances of their own. Colin Gallagher had a really good chance in the first half, managing to head the ball a whisker wide. Declan Rudd had to make a few saves as well. And in the final seven minutes of added time, Charlton were throwing everything at Preston, which got a little bit desperate for them, but they managed to hold on in the end, and it was a fantastic victory for Preston. This game was probably overshadowed by the speculation with Alex Neal. If you've not known already, Stoke apparently were going to try and approach him. Preston didn't give Stoke any permission at all and Stoke could be in potentially so much trouble. They're already in so much trouble in terms of their league position but with that they could have horrific penalties in terms of fines and depending how bad the situation is, depending what's gone on, it could result in a point deduction which is the last thing Stoke need at the moment. I don't think it will go to points deductions, I think they'll need to do a lot worse or contain or commit multiple breaches for that to happen, but they could get a really heavy fine. Alex Neal sounds like he is committed to Preston. I think he is very aware of the speculation surrounding around him, but I do think Preston do have Alex Neal, at least for this season. He knows that he doesn't want to kill this momentum at the moment because Preston are at the time of their lives at the moment. From 24th at this stage last year to first place this year, no other side has seen a more drastic improvement in 12 months than Preston North End have. And the final game ended as a 2-0 away victory to West Brom, a game that they practically dominated for most of the game. Stoke, to be fair to them, they did try to create something. They had a few attacking chances, albeit in their final project, they barely tested Sam Johnston. West Brom scored their first through Matty Phillips. It was a fantastic interlocking passing play. Stoke's defence simply couldn't deal with it. West Brom's second goal came from a penalty, a stonewall penalty in my opinion. Just a very, very silly challenge and very lacklustre defending. I think Stoke are a bit lucky that it didn't, wasn't worse off. Pereira managed to head a, a ball which hit the post. And I've, what really concerned me more or less was the fans. Stoke fans were not making any noise in my opinion, there were barely any there. West Brom fans in harmony, they were singing Slavin Bilic's name. It was absolutely brilliant for West Brom, but dire for Stoke. They need to find a new manager as soon as possible, in my opinion. So that's all the games covered. Here is how the current table looks before Stoke play against West Brom. As you can see, Preston and Leeds occupy the top two places with 28 points. Swansea very close behind them, also on 28 points. West Brom yet to play on 27. Nottingham Forest and Bristol City make up the final promotion playoff places with 25 points. It's so tight. That's why I really, really like this season so far. Because Sheffield Wednesday, Fulham and Queen's Park Rangers really, really close behind them. Charlton are only three points off the playoffs, so they've not quite lost ground yet, but I'd say Charlton will need to be a bit more careful when fine playing against sides around them. Hull have recovered well. They're only three points off the playoffs. Birmingham are only three points off the playoffs as well. Brentford, Cardiff, Derby are only four points off the playoffs. They could easily sneak in with some fantastic form. And I think that with the others below them, you've got Blackburn, Millwall, Huddersfield have been done really, really well. Reading, Wigan, Luton Town 21st. They've got to have to really pick up some home points as soon as they can. And obviously the final three, you've got Stoke, who are yet to play, obviously. Barnsley and Middlesbrough occupying the relegation places. So to finally go off this video, I'm going to go through my goal for weekend, player for weekend and result for weekend. 
Goal of the weekend has to be Sam Bulldog's one against Millwall. Although I would say Jed Wallace's one actually against their opponents, Reading, gets a really, really close second. Both were fantastic goals. In terms of my resolve for weekend, oh, there's so many. I'm going to go for Hull getting a 3 0 away victory against Fulham. I think they've really blown a really high score inside out of the park. And it's almost like Fulham have got a bit of a reality check going on from a fantastic performance. So. I'm going to give my result for the weekend to Hull City, although Preston and uh, Cardiff and Birmingham games get very close second. Player for the weekend, really difficult, but I think I'm going to give it to Joe Walls, who managed to get a hat trick for Dar uh, Cardiff. He, without him, Cardiff would not have been beaten Birmingham. So I'm going to give my player for the weekend to Joe Walls. But there you have it, that wraps it up for another weekend of Championship football. Next week is the final football week before in the next international break, which is a shame. But I am really, really excited with the games coming up. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like, give it a share and a subscribe. All of that would be tremendously appreciated. Got 50 subs, let's see if we can get 50 more as soon as we can. As I say, congratulations to James Kelday. You get my first shout out. You'll be in the Lexus Hall of Fame. Let's hope that more people join you. But that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary. If you saw the end of this extravagant weekend of championship football. And as always, and my cat. Take care.